Hi, in this tutorial we're just going to have a look at how to interpret a Causey spectrum. So this is the first time you've ever come across a Causey spectrum. There really aren't a uh, quite easy way of interpreting uh, spectra really. Well, I, th I think so anyway. So I've just took this alcohol, this um, propanol. So it's propanol. Propanol or propanol. And I've I've coloured the um, protons in the uh, in the compound uh, green, blue, red, and I've left the OH as black. I've done a quick sketch here of what I think the splitting patterns should look like. They they might be slightly different to that, especially um, this one here. I've just uh, just for illustration purposes really I've drawn it like this. And we'll do splitting patterns another time, but we'll go over it basically now as well. So the OH I've left as broad because it's coming off, it's, and this has been dissolved in some deuterated um, solvent, say, so deuterated methanol, so we've used that. So methanol, if I just draw it up here in red, so it'll be CD3 or D. Okay, so D is deuterium. That's not going to show up on this 1H spectrum, okay? This is a hydrogen spectrum, looking at the hydrogen nucleus, not a deuterium nucleus. So that won't show up, this won't show up. But unfortunately we'll exchange um, with um, this alcohol in solution, so we'll get it, because it's exchanging then, we don't really know where this proton's going to come, because it's going to be off, on and off, so it broadens the signal. So exchange signals tend to be broad like that. I'll say, okay, so that's quite easy to identify. Also, it's it's near the electronegative element, and as the uh, protons that we're looking at get closer and closer to the electronegative element, we tend to see they they shift um, downfield. It's called downfield this in in this direction here, like this. Okay, and that terminology just basically comes from um, the olden days, really, when NMRs used to be um, uh, they used to vary the field strength, so we could see. But now it's all with Fourier transform. We we just do um, a spectrum of all the frequencies at once. But just just for all, all time's sake, really. Basically, electronegative elements tend to go in this direction. That's that's the key thing I think the take on message. So if we look at this, this one's this carbon's closer to the oxygen, so the electron density is moving towards oxygen there. So this one should be this one. Um, Simply because it's it's closest to the oxygen, so let's let's colour that red. And similar, this one's and there's the next one along, and that should be that one. Colour that blue. And the next peak here, the last one, is this methyl peak at the end, and that should be we'll colour that green. Obviously, this is just for it, illustrative purposes. So it's it's not going to appear that colour in your real spectrum. So if I just draw the rest of the lines in like it's a real spectrum now. Okay, so this is what your real spectrum would look like. And this would be about 1 ppm here. And this would be a near near to 5 or something like that. Depends on the solvent really. So this is, let's, let's say that's 4 ppm. So they're all within that range, between 1 and 4 ppm. Now, if you do a two-dimensional spectrum, what are you actually doing? Well, I think the best way to look at that is to imagine it as being a series of one-dimensional spectrums. You've got the one-dimensional spectrum at the top, uh, but imagine we do uh, one experiment, and we say, right, we're just going to irradiate this position here, so only this one. And anything that this one's connected to should get uh, should feel that radiation. So let's just, let's just put a, zig a zigzag line there. We'll just do those hydrogens, see what happens, see what they're connected to. So if you do those hydrogens, I tell you what, I'm just going to put a line in because the the symmetry is quite important. Now I've got to choose a decent colour that's not going to clash with our colours. I'll choose this pinky purple colour. If I just draw a line all the way down there. Okay, that's just because this, there is some symmetry to it, and I'll explain that in a second. It just tells me where I can go as well. So if we now draw um, that like that, and I'll just get myself a circle. Get myself some nice colours out. 
Okay, so the, if we radiate here, then that's going to be in that position there, okay? Like that. But we're radiating it, irradiating here, so what is this one connected to? Well, let's have a look. Anything, because we're only irradiating this frequency here. So if I draw another line, let's draw another line, and I'll leave that in green because that's to do with this, and let's say uh, we irradiate at that frequency there, okay? just irradiating at this frequency here. We, uh, if we go down here, we're going to change the frequency. We're basically going to go across this spectrum in this direction, but we're going to do it that way. Okay, so this is at 1 ppm. If I just write that in, 1 ppm. So that's 1 ppm. We are already at there. What's going to show up? Anything that's connected to that proton, like this one, for example, should show up. So the next one along, the next carbon along should show up. So I'm going to draw a green circle again to show what this this one's connected to. So I'll draw it like that. Okay, so that shows up like that. And that should really be, I'll draw it a bit better than that, because that should be really be a bit more symmetrical, more like a circle. Okay, up. so that's that one. So we've got one um, signal at the moment. Now if we move along, we don't see any of the others because they're not directly connected by one carbon apart, okay? So it's one carbon apart we're looking for. So nothing else shows up when, when we're ready at that. Now what we've got to do is move the irradiation thing onto this one. So we're going to radiate this one now. So if we radiate this one, so we're going to need a, a blue circle. Let's change our colour to blue. I'll change that to blue as well. If we radiate that one, what do we see? Well, let's put that on there. We see that first because that's one we're radiating. That's all right. We expected that. But what else can we see? Well, this one here is connected to that one and that one. So we should see that one again. Oops, ignore that. So we should see that one again. And we should see this one now. I'll just move that around a little bit, making sure it's in line. So that should be in line with that. And that's effectively just like saying, okay, I've just irradiated in this position here, okay? So that is just like saying, I've irradiated here, here in the, um, so that's 2 ppm. All right. So that's what we see there. So we've got a little bit of symmetry coming. We've got like a box structure. You might see them before. The next thing to do, you probably guessed, is irradiate now on this hydrogen here. Now this hydrogen is only connected to this one. If we didn't have this exchange going on, we might see this one as well. But let's imagine that this is on and off, on and off. We can't see it. So I now need a red circle. Just choose red. Okay, so we're radiating this one now. And yeah, we're going to see see it on itself. Let's move that along a little bit. Put it directly under that. In fact, I can copy that kind of. And then we'll see another one for this one that it's directly next to, which is the blue one. Okay, so you'll see a spectrum like that if you irradiate at this frequency now. So anything, and all you do in COSI, you just keep going along the whole spectrum, really, like that. So it's really a set of um, one-dimensional spectra, all stacked on top of each other and plotted like that. If you looked at them individually, just at this line here, then you'd see that this one is has got a triplet, and this one here has got whatever this has got as well. Okay, so that's a, a good way of looking at COSI spectra, is just to think of them as, as 1D spectra, all stacked next to each other. So if we take if we take the lines out now, and just get rid of them, you can see you've got this, this pattern. So you get this square pattern. And that's because if you radiate this one, it'll show this one up. And if you radiate that one, it should show that one up. 
because in a cosy spectrum there's some symmetry there because it's it's connected there's nothing changed that one's connected to that and that one's connected to that the only things that are different are if you've got something in the middle like this where it's connected to that one and it's connected to that one so you'll see them both so that's a good way of finding the position of a set of hydrogens on the carbon is by this pattern as well if we start off with this um, proton I'm just going to whiz through now how to interpret the cosy so we're going backwards now so I've, I basically started with this and drew the cosy but obviously you'll get the cosy spectrum yourself won't you so if we look at how to interpret this we don't know wherever anything is we've not interpreted the 1d spectrum because imagine it's a complicated molecule not like this then we just get a cosy spectrum like that well we've got to start somewhere so we'll start here so okay that can be our one position there and let's just change that color to something a bit more easy to see like red okay right just get rid of that middle bit okay so that that's um, that's where we're gonna start so we start here we say right what's this connected that's connected to that one so we know there's a connection between that one and that one that's good now we look at this one and that's connected to that one and it's connected to that one okay well that's good because that means that one is connected to that one we knew that anyway but it's also connected to that one that's good and then from that one we look at that and if that had another connection it carry on but it doesn't it's only connected to the one it was previously connected to so that's a good way of skipping through or oh, another another technique I see quite a lot actually that people use um, is just get rid of these is to draw like a path so I've just whizzed around bouncing around there. so some people actually draw a path because you know that one's connected to that one you'll need to look at one path and I think I think the best best way of um, looking at that is to um, draw lines like this so this we've got a red line there is to draw a line like that so we go from that path and then we'll go from there down to here because we know it's connected to that and then that just follows on like that and follows on like that and I'll briefly explain what I've done so basically if you see we've gone we started here and we're connected to that one so we know where that one is we find that on the diagonal then we'll go back to the diagonal and from that bit on the diagonal we find what that's connected to well we've just come from there so we don't need to do that one so we go on to the next one and from there we we'll go back onto the diagonal because the diagonal here actually should be the one dimensional spectrum this is just a coupled or correlated spectrum on the sides so that's one way of doing it this zigzag path like that but make sure once you go off you always come back to the diagonal so that's hopefully um, just a brief introduction to how to interpret a causal spectrum. Uh, next, we'll have a look at how to interpret a toxic spectrum.